Welcome to Miss Lovedoll's video on weather and air masses. This is Itty Bitty Kitty. She does not want to be in the house, but it's raining outside, so she has to be. I'm going to let her go now. Unless you want to see her on the video some more. Okay, maybe not. She doesn't look very happy, does she? Okay. Okay, so weather and air masses. That's the reason to our topic for um, the next couple of days. So what causes weather? What are the characteristics of weather? We all know we have weather. Um, Sunday, for example, the weather was horrible, but Saturday it was great. So what causes the weather to change? Weather is defined as the conditions of the atmosphere at a specific time and place. So take a look at these two pictures here. Does it make a difference if it's July or February? Or how about whether or not we're talking about North America versus Australia? I think it does make a difference. So what causes weather? The ultimate driving force is the sun. It eats the Earth's surface unevenly because of the tilt of the Earth's axis. And hopefully you guys remember that from elementary school. But if not, we could do a really quick review. I'll do that in another video. The next principle behind weather is that warm air near the surface can evaporate more water. And this warm air also is less dense, so it rises. And this warm, moist air, as it rises, leaves room behind for cooler, denser air to flow in. This flowing air is wind. In addition, the rising air cools as it gets higher in altitude. And this cooler air can't hold as much water. So if it is a moist air mass, that water starts to condense out into clouds and possibly precipitation. I didn't say rain, because sometimes it snows. Weather and the water cycle are closely linked. Humidity, clouds, precipitation are all important parts of the water cycle. You should draw a picture of the water cycle in your notes. In fact, what do your notes look like right now? You could pause this video. I'm not sure if it'll show up very well, but in general, it's the main points of what I've been saying. Air masses are the thing that changes our weather. An air mass is a large body of air that has about the same conditions throughout. Conditions are things like temperature, water vapor, things we can measure. The conditions of an air mass depend on where it was formed. So what does that mean? Air masses can form over land or over water, and they can also form near the equator where it's warm or further north where it's cool. These four things change the conditions inside an air mass. So here we have, that's my cat. She is on the counter. I have to go yell at her in just a minute. Anyways, um, maritime polar and maritime tropical air, ma air masses are both formed over water. But maritime polar, you can see those two air masses right off the coast of northern California and Canada and Alaska, and then on the east coast, off the coast of Nova Scotia. So the maritime polar mass air masses that are formed in these areas are going to be cool and moist. But further south, off the coast of Florida and off the coast of, say, Southern California, those maritime air masses are tropical, so they're going to be warm and moist. Then we also have continental Arctic and continental polar air masses. Those two air masses, one over the North Pole, there's my cat again, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to have to yell at her. Anyways, the continental Arctic is very cold and very dry, and the continental polar air masses are formed over northern Canada, and they're also cold and dry. And the last one we want to talk about is CT, the continental tropical, which is hot and dry. And you can see that out there in the west over, you know, the Rocky Mountains, Denver, New Mexico, those areas. An air mass 
brings the wet, new weather into a region. So we can see from this picture of the United States, this is a, a weather map that um, actually happened. The blue and the red lines are showing the frontal boundaries. So behind that blue line, say in the middle of the United States, you can see that the weather is cool and rainy. In front of that blue line, which shows a frontal boundary, is a different air mass. And that one is a lot warmer and it's dry. There's no rain, it's just clear skies. So the new weather in an area matches the conditions in the air mass that is coming through. So here's an example of what your notes might look like right now. And again, I'm not sure if it's big enough to see on, a, on the podcast, but um, it's basically just everything that has been on the video and on the slides as we've gone by. So now you know about air, masses, and weather. And I'd like to thank a bunch of people who provided photos and background information for the video. It makes it a little bit more interesting than just watching slides go by with text and listening to me talk. So thank you. Appreciate it very much.